morning, Jesus Image Church. How are we doing this morning? Amen. We just want to welcome everyone online. Um, this morning in the back, we were just thinking and thanking the Lord of His majesty. Amen. He's so good. I just want to read a scripture real quick. Psalm 63. Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name, and my soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. Lord, we praise you this morning with joyful lips. Can we just do that this morning? Just lift up a joyful shout to the Lord of His loving kindness, of His goodness. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you. We love you, Jesus. Just keep going, you guys. We're just going to keep praising the Lord. It's not going to stop, Lord. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let's just keep thanking the Lord. Oh, we're so grateful for all you've done. Thank you, Jesus. Keep thinking you Sings my 
You're the Lamb upon the throne, and unto You we lift our voice in praise. You're the Lamb upon the throne. Sing it one more time for You. You're the Lamb upon the throne. You're the Lamb upon the throne. You're the Lamb upon the vessel offer to you a sacrifice of praise you alone are holy Jesus you
Give.
Sing that again, every voice, softly, every voice.
Yeah, every voice, everything, everything. the Lord and just begin to love him in the spirit come on just begin to bless him come on all over the room all over the room it's a very special moment in his presence right there. Just let go, let go, let go. Keep singing in the Holy Ghost. Another minute to sing in the Spirit. Keep singing, don't stop singing. From a long way away. Because you feel like you've been living under just this cloud of heaviness. Keep singing, don't stop singing. I'm not sure if it's a lady watching or if she actually came, but 
If you came from a long way away, you're in the room, and you've been living under this heavy, heavy weight, and you want to be free this morning, I want you to come down right now. You came from a long way. Sing in the Holy Spirit. Keep singing, keep singing. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, your word says that your yoke is easy, your burden is light. You said, my peace I give unto you. So in the name of Jesus Christ, I bind and rebuke every single voice that lies to you, that keeps you up at night, the Lord rebuke you in Jesus' name. Every foul spirit, every dark voice, every dark lie, you guys keep worshiping behind me. Goes now in Jesus' name, right now. Go. Every single one. I declare the word of the Lord over you. Come unto me. Come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. I will give you rest. I will give you rest. And now in the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I plead the blood. I plead the blood right now over each and every one of you. And I declare the name of Jesus over each and every one of you. The name above every name. The name at which every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I lift and declare the power of the cross over you. That by the cross of Christ, every tormenting spirit has been rendered powerless. Everyone. The cross is against every lying, tormenting spirit in Jesus. And in the name of Jesus, I lift the power of the word over you. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven. And it is written, it is written that Jesus Christ has the name above every name. And the Bible says, the Bible says that I knew you in your mother's womb. Before I formed you, I knew you. I knew you. That's for somebody right here. I knew you. I knew you. I knew you. The Lord's word says, I have good plans for you. The Lord gives you hope and the future. So today, in Jesus' name, there is a bloodline around you. And we cast down, we cast down every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ Jesus. Every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Uh, I exalt thee real softly, very softly. The whole house is going to sing because we're in this together, amen?
now, Lord, fill every empty space with your presence. Every empty space, no dry places. No dry places. No. Come, Holy Spirit, now and fill what's been swept clean. Fill what's been swept clean. Can you give me my Bible, Scott? worship like this, the hand of the Lord begins to move. That's what the Bible teaches. Sing it again, I exalt you. All eyes on Jesus, all focus on Jesus. than we can do in his presence. I just want you to stand there and listen in complete silence right now. Listen carefully. I feel, listen, that the Lord is calling right now the wayward heart, the wayward heart home, and the prodigal home. The Bible says God did not create hell. Hell was not created for you, but for the devil and his angels. God has good thoughts toward you this morning. And he's calling out to you as a loving father. Arms outstretched, proven by the cross, that he is the one who outstretches his arms. He is the cruciform God who calls a people. Listen to the word of God. A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. I wonder if there's anyone in the room who's chosen the temporary pleasure of the world that cannot satisfy the soul above loving Jesus. So he divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. There's no quicker way to waste your life than to go to a far country. In other words, to leave the presence of God. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in the land and he began to be in want. And then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his fields to feed swine. I wonder if there's anyone here this morning who went off even an inch and you discovered that when you give the devil an inch, he'll take 10 miles. And rather than visiting the world, you became a slave, a servant of the world and joined it. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate and no one gave him anything. You discovered, friends, hear me, with your eyes closed, listen to me, with your eyes closed. You discovered that the world looks generous and kind, but the world is after itself. Nobody came your way to rescue you. You discovered that that far country was barren. There was no water there, no food there that would sustain your heart. But when he came to himself, and that's what I believe is happening this morning, and those of you watching all around the world, many of you by the Spirit are going to come to yourself. The lights are going to go on right now. It's in the presence of the Spirit that the lights go on. 
as the word of God is going forth in clarity right now and in piercing boldness, the lights are going on. And you're going to come to yourself, and many of you are right now. He said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare? And yet I perish with hunger. He remembered the bountiful treasure chest of the Lord's presence. And I believe that as many of you walked into this wonderful atmosphere, you remembered. I remember the beauty of his presence. I've been running. I remember what it felt like when my parents prayed for me. I remember moments as a child hearing and feeling the word of God deep in my soul like a burning fire. I will arise and go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son make me like a hired servant and he arose and came to his father but when he was still a great way off his father saw him and had compassion many of our eyes are opening this morning to the Lord's presence but I have news for you the father saw you afar off the father saw you this morning getting ready the father saw you last month he saw you last year when you were running and his heart never changed. And he had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Is anybody in the room happy this morning that it's not about our worth, it's about the Lord's? There is none found worthy. Only one can open the scroll and break the seal, the Lamb of God. But the Father said to his servants, bring out the best robe. Regardless of your sin this morning, if you come to Jesus in repentance, he will clothe you in robes of righteousness, robes of white. And he put it on him. And he put a ring on his hand, speaking of, of marriage. And we are betrothed to the Lord Speaking of covenant, he put sandals on his feet to equip his walk. You can leave here walking in perfect freedom. You can leave here and break free of every cycle of sin, and you can walk in victory daily. I want you right now with your eyes closed to picture that father who missed his son, who had gone out to meet his son, those old, withered, weakened legs mustering up all his energy to come out and meet the one who came to himself. And this morning, with every head bowed and eye closed, God is setting so many of these precious people free at the altar. But if maybe you give your heart to Jesus a long time ago and you tasted the world and you've discovered this thing is empty. This thing is empty and it leaves you a slave. You don't weep in his presence anymore. You don't read the scriptures and come alive. Or maybe you've never asked Jesus into your heart. In other words, let, let me say it another way. You've never truly repented of your sin and given Jesus your entire life and made him Lord over your life. You've never truly said yes to becoming a disciple. You made him a sin eraser. He's much more than that. He's the Lord of the ages. And he's a worthy shepherd. If that's you this morning, I don't even want to do it the traditional route. I sense the Lord here. I want you to get out of your seats, come down the aisle, wherever there's room. You can, we've got some room at the altar. You can do it right there in the aisle, but get out of your seats and come down and respond to the loving presence of the Lord. Waste no time. Ushers, help me behind, coming down here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah, we've got room there in the corner. Thank you, Lord. Church, give the Lord praise. This is wonderful. There are more coming. Don't come in shame. Come, come, say, I've sinned against heaven. I've sinned against you, Father. 
Thank you, Jesus. Oh, let's give the Lord praise one more time. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. I'd like everyone who's come forward, unless the Lord is really touching you, to look at me, if you're able. Just look me right in the eye. This is a very sacred time, a holy time. And I want us to pray right now. The Lord will honor our prayer because he hears us. He hears, thank you, Jesus. This is wonderful. Little young boy. Thank you, Lord. Guys, can we just thank him again? Just thank him. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord will hear us now, but this is not some empty, empty uh, monologue. This is a transaction. This is a heart-to-heart -heart transaction. This is us giving the Lord our filth, us giving the Lord what is, makes us deserving of death, and then in his great majesty, the Lord gives us not only forgiveness, but the greatness and the wonder of eternal life. And he comes to live inside of us and make us his home. And we become the temple of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus promised to be with you forever and ever and ever, even, even, even into the end of the age. So you say, what does he ask of me now? Your heart, your life, your will. He wants you to turn from this world and, this, and Satan himself and turn to the wonder of Calvary's cross. Christ crucified and put all your trust in the tree, in the one who hangs on the tree and bleeds, and the one who was buried and rose again. That's what we do. Let's all pray out loud, especially these who've come forward. I want us to pray with heartfelt words. Are you ready to pray? Are you ready to pray? Say this, Heavenly Father, this morning, I've come to myself. I want nothing of the world. It leaves me empty. And I am tired. Forgive my sin. I confess my sin. And I don't want it anymore. And I have sinned against you. But I stand on your promise this morning. That if I do confess my sin that you're faithful and just to forgive my sin and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Would you do that this morning, Father? Cleanse my soul. Set me free. Make me brand new. Jesus, I declare that you are the son of the living God and that you died on the cross and shed your blood for me and I declare that you were buried that you've been raised from the dead and that today you are seated at the right hand of the father you've ascended above the highest height as lord of lords as King of Kings. And I declare that you are coming back again to rule and reign. Oh, I love that. To rule and reign over me and over the entire world. So Jesus, because of your worth, it is only right that I offer my life to you. Receive my life. As I receive your life, come and live in my heart and save my soul this morning. I want to be born again. I want to fall in love with Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. Now, you can stay before you move, before you move up front here. Many of you are standing, many of you are on your knees, some are on the ground. I want you to hear me. 
You never have to be part of some lifeless cycle. You never do. Sin cycles are a lie. I, I, should, I shouldn't say that. The thought that you need to live in them is a lie. And to live a strong Christian life, there are just a few things you need to do. Number one, read your Bible every day. It is living bread. And we live by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. Read your Bible. Number two, pray. Pray. Pray is fellowship with the Lord. It's a conversation with the Lord. And just like anybody else, maybe it's your spouse, your children, you can't be close to them if there's no conversation. Pray. Number three, guys, can we get the booklets to them, please? Number three, be baptized in water. It's Jesus who saves. It's not the water that saves, clearly. Yet baptism is a command. It is a command from heaven. And we want to be obedient children. And it is an absolute encounter in the water with the living God. Be baptized in water. We can do that here. I believe we do it every six weeks, if I'm not mistaken. Number four, number four. You need to share your faith. It might be out of order in, in, in comparison to the booklet, but number four, share your faith. Tell somebody about Jesus. It's very important. Every time you tell somebody about Jesus and show the love of Jesus, you let the Holy Spirit move through you. Your life becomes a flowing river rather than a stagnant lake that just accumulates muck. You don't want that. You want to be a moving, clean, powerful vessel of the river of God. Four, Join a local church, and, and, and not, in a, not in an empty way. Give your heart to the presence of God with a people and give, the, uh, give others your life. That is what the church is. Lastly, lastly, the Lord promised to empower us with the Holy Spirit. And that's what I want to pray right now over everyone who came forward and everybody in their seats. How many of you want a fresh infilling? of the Spirit. Paul said, be ye filled. Be ye filled. Present tense, be filled. So whether you've been saved for a moment or for 50 years, there's always more in the presence of the Holy Spirit. So why don't you all lift your hands? Let me just pray over you. And for those of you who come forward, you don't work now. Actually, nobody works. You just receive. Father, you're the one who gives us the gift and your word says that the coming of the Spirit is the promise of the Father. The promise of the Father. And so, Holy Spirit, would you begin to move and empower your people and fill them, fill them, fill them from head to toe with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Your word says that we will receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon us to be witnesses Make this church vital, burning, holy, fiery, Jesus-loving witnesses. Witnesses. Not just to witness, but to be a witness. To be the message. And they're going in. And they're coming out. Let them burn with the fire of the Holy Ghost. So in Jesus' name, receive, receive, receive the power, the power, the wonder of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, all of you who came forward, yeah, you can give the Lord praise. You can give the Lord praise. All of you who came forward, you should have all received uh, one of those booklets. And in that book, look, we, we took our time with that. We don't do anything just for marketing that is loaded with substance and it is meant to help you live a strong, victorious Christian life. Afterward, we would love to see you. Afterward, David, is there the table in the lobby? It is a new believer's table. Please meet with our team. It would be our joy to serve you and walk with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Let's welcome them back to their seats, back into newness in the Lord. David. Come on, give the Lord praise. Come on, one more time. Can we just honor the Lord for what he's done today?
Come on, we can do better than that. Aren't you thankful that we're a part of a house of God that sees lives changed, people healed, people set free? Come on, can we just give Jesus some praise in this place? We love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We honor you today. Amen. Amen. Well, my name is David, and I have the honor of serving here at Jesus Image today. And before I take up the offering, um, I want to let you know of just a couple of things going on here. The biggest thing uh, happening this week is, let me hear you say, this Tuesday, this Tuesday is our church gathering, our church gathering. And uh, Pastor Michael talked about this just a moment ago about plugging into the house of the Lord. And I would just encourage you, if you are, you know, kicking the tires about Jesus image, and if this is going to be your church home, and if this is going to be the place where you want to call and plug into, I would encourage you, one, you'd find no better place. We'd love to, on, we'd love to uh, serve you as your church family, but be a part of our church gathering this Tuesday. You can scan that QR code there and sign up for it. This is an amazing way to hear from Pastor Michael and Jessica, the vision and the heart of Jesus Image Church, to find out more ways to plug in, to be involved. We'll have some refreshments. Kids are welcome, and we'd love to see you this Tuesday at our church gathering. I want to uh, read to you today two portions of Scripture as we talk about giving, this idea of giving. And this is something that the Lord's been kind of highlighting to me on this idea and this topic. And uh, one of them, Pastor Michael, actually shared yesterday at our at our vision breakfast, which was amazing. Do we have anybody that was here yesterday for the, uh, for the vision breakfast? Wasn't that an incredible time together? Those are, in, those are amazing. Those are absolutely amazing. And um, yeah, it's amazing. If you haven't been able to be a part of those, make sure you join the next one. But in Malachi chapter three, I wanna look at this. This is something that when it comes to scripture and the idea of giving, this is a very popular one. But there was something that the Lord highlighted to me this morning as I was reading it. And it's, I'm going to start a little earlier than we normally do, which is in chapter 3, verse 6. It says, I am the Lord, I do not change. Catch that. I am the Lord, I do not change. That is why you descendants of Jacob are not already destroyed. I'm thankful for that. Ever since the days of your ancestors, you have scorned my decrees and failed to obey them. Now return to me and I will return to you. Aren't you thankful for that promise? Says the Lord of heaven's armies. But you ask, how can we return when we never gone away. Should people cheat God? Yet you have cheated me. But you ask, what do you mean? When did we ever cheat you? And catch this, you have cheated me of the tithes and offerings due to me. You are under a curse for your whole nation has been cheating me. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. Notice that there, this wasn't, a, uh, this wasn't a group of pastors that wrote this, actually. This is the word of God that wrote this, that says that those who keep the tithe, the Leviticus talks about how the tithe is actually holy. And the, the, the scripture here says that anyone that keeps the tithe from the Lord is actually a robber. And then it says in Luke, I want to read Luke chapter 17. This is what Pastor Michael shared yesterday. And I never kind of caught it this way. But it says in verse 10, Luke 17, if you are faithful in little things, you will be a faithful in large ones. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be honored, honored with great responsibilities. And if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches of heaven? And if you're not faithful with other people's things, why should you be trusted with things of your own? And I'd like to pose to you today between those two scriptures there, that there's actually two tests that we can be a part of. There's one test where we can test God and we can see the faithfulness of the Lord. When we test him, he is good every single time. I promise you, he is a great test taker. He doesn't fail. Our Lord does not fail. But there's also a second test that we're a part of and that is our life. And what we're gonna do with our life here on this side of eternity. And can I pose you today, don't rob the Lord of his tithe. Actually. All of it is his. Everything that is good is from the Lord, says the Bible. So, so whenever everything that we have is from the Lord, but he's asking just simply give him back the first 10%. And I would say, don't rob the Lord today, but prove yourself faithful. How many of you want to be proved and tested faithful today? You want to pass the test of faithfulness on this side of eternity so that we can be justed with heavenly treasures. And so as you give today, I would ask you to ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, where are the areas in my life that I need to be really tested in? 
Jesus talks about how, show me your, wherever your treasures is, there your heart is. I think giving is, it's not like the Lord needs our giving. Giving is actually the Lord's way of testing our heart to see where our treasure is, to see what we value, to see what we love. And so today I'd ask, ask the Lord, search me, Lord. What are the areas, what are the ties, what are the things that I may have been holding back from you that I need to give and be faithful to you with today? And I promise you every single time if we test the Lord, he is faithful, he is good, he goes above and beyond everything that we could ever think or imagine. And so let me pray a blessing over you as you give today. Would you simply just close your eyes, bow your head. Lord, I thank you so much that you are faithful and that you are good. Lord, I thank you so much that in every season, in every circumstance that we can test you, specifically with this area of tithe and with generosity, that if we give, you are faithful, Lord. Lord, I pray a blessing over your church today that as they give, as they are faithful to your word, they will pass this test. That you will honor them, that you will bless them, that you will use this tithe and this offering to make an impact in the world. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you for the generosity that you've shown us by sending your son, Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody says, Amen, amen. For those who are watching online, the, the information there is on your screen. And if you're here in the room, you, if you need an envelope, you can just simply lift up your hand. Our ushers will come around and make sure that you have those. Or you can follow the prompts on the screen here and text to give, and we will be right back.
We'll know that a Jesus movement is upon us when people start coming for the sake of Jesus. And we'll know that a Jesus movement is upon us when we're more aware of Jesus than the movement. There's only salvation in Jesus. Is here, I have determined to know nothing except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Nothing this world has to offer will ever satisfy your soul. Only Jesus will satisfy your soul. Jesus is so real, He's so near. the hero. He's the hero. Jesus is the hero. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Someone stood up for Jesus as the hero. Amen. Let's give the Lord praise. He is the hero. And uh, Jesus 22, it's, it's, we're about 90 days out, right? 90. 90. 90. It sounded like you said nine. No, 90. Okay. 90. <laughs> She's like, no way, we have a lot of work to do. Um, register. How many of you have not registered? Oh, wow. You guys are good. Wait, lift your hands in the presence of the Lord. Not going to hurt you. Okay. Make sure you register. And what I want you to do right now, here's what I'm going to ask everyone to do, even if you have registered. Take your phones out. No scrolling. That's devilish. Okay. I want you to type, to go to your notes on your phone. I don't need to tell you youngins where that is. You probably stare at it and go straight to where you want to go on a nap. Uh, type in five people that you know need to be there on your phone right now. I'm believing for thousands to be healed and saved and set free on those fields. Type in those five people. And then what we're going to do is by the end of the day today, you're going to send the link uh, for Jesus 22 to them and invite them. That's everyone. That's staff, everybody. Five people. It doesn't matter if they don't live in Orlando because people come in from all over the world. They, they can live in another nation. That just, this is a worldwide event. So type in those names. And by the end of the day, you're going to forward each of them a link. And uh, we're going to see lives changed in Jesus' name. Amen. Say, that, say amen. amen. Okay, so that's Jesus 22, December 16 and 17. For those of you watching, come. Come from around the world. Come from all over America. These events are sacred. They're special. They're holy. They are, of course, we're biased, but they are absolutely life-changing encounters in the presence of God. We just got news two days ago that our dear friend, Brother Yoon, said yes, I'm so happy about that. He'll be there. And uh, a huge company of our, uh, we don't even call them guests, our friends and family who are coming, will be uh, helping with Sunday services and the entire weekend uh, experience here following Jesus 22. So for those, when, so when would Sunday be? That'd be the 19th, right? Yeah. No, the 18th, okay. So from like the 15th to the 18th, it's going to be a burning inferno here in Orlando. I just would hang around. And uh, my plan is, I haven't even told Carla this yet, or Jess, which means it's fresh, <laughs> hot off the press. I felt it this morning in prayer. I want us to have prayer meetings that are open to the public leading up to the event. And we'll find a place to do it. Okay. We'll do it at the house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No. Uh, we're going to pray and seek the Lord and watch him touch our city. Other movements are bringing their, uh, other churches and movements are bringing their ministry school teams. I think Upper Room is bringing a team. Bethel's looking at bringing a team. Um, oh gosh, I, I forgot. There were a couple others that I talked to. Oh, I talked to um, the circuit riders. Hopefully they're going to be able to make it and come in town. So I want our city to feel the love of Jesus and to feel the mighty power of God. Amen. So Jesus 22, register. Secondly, Sunday nights. Uh, 
they have been uh, indescribable. Uh, last Sunday, we did an impartation. Uh, I don't call them fire tunnels. Uh, for some reason, somebody heard fire tunnel for so long that, uh, well, I'm not going to say, but people got incredibly interesting uh, going through those. So this is what they are, prayer lines, okay? And last, last Sunday night, it was just like heaven on earth about halfway through. Um, and they've just been indescribable these Sunday nights. So I know many of you kind of have your Sunday rhythm. Some of you have children. Some of you, it's difficult to get out on a Sunday night. What I felt to say this morning when I was in my seat was this. If you're, if you're, if you're part of that group, it's just very difficult for you to get to on a Sunday night. I'd like to challenge you as a pastor to try to make one a month because you need extend, we all do, extended stints of time with the body of Christ in his glory. There's just no replacing it. I remember Bill told me when it came to raising kids uh, who were believers, one of the tips he gave me was expose your children to God's presence regardless of how uncomfortable it makes you or them. It makes both of us uncomfortable at times if you ever raise kids in church. So it rewires uh, us, the presence of God, and recalibrates us. So try to get there. All right, lastly, and that's why Jesse's really up here. As of Thursday, how many of you know that, hopefully you know, uh, about the Build His House campaign? Okay, how many of you have no idea what Build His House is? Okay, lift your hands. Come on, lift them up. There's no shame. Okay. The Build His House campaign, you can throw that up. That is the building campaign. There, we're, that will be our home uh, for our church family. Thank you, Jesus. And the plans and the blueprints and our work with the county. Uh, everything you saw in that video was taking place on, I actually got the numbers slightly wrong yesterday at the Vision Breakfast. Carla lovingly rebuked me. Um, we were doing all that on just over, and right around it looks like eight and a half acres only. Okay, I, I think it's closer to nine, but these are the numbers she sent me. But I, I don't believe them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do, Carla, don't, don't be offended. Um, the good news is that as of last Thursday, we closed on an additional 20 that connects to it. 20 acres. And uh, so there you go. And um, thank you, Lord. And amazingly, we were, we were accomplishing a lot with that original acreage. But let me just tell you what happened. Um, I was on the property. We, we, we had owned, the God owned the property. It's not my property. It's the Lord's property. And I was on the property and I felt in my heart that, my, that the vision the Lord was giving was bigger, bigger than the acreage. Yeah. And this was a few months back, about five, six months ago. So I was on, out there just looking at it and this, this, this uh, prayer just leapt up in my soul. Lord, give us that acreage right there. And it, it, it wasn't for sale uh, at the time. That was the first time it leapt up in my heart. It was not for sale. I think I went back one time to show somebody the property and I felt, you know, I still feel like that's in, in Jesus' image's future. I never really even verbalized it, which I would not teach. I would actually teach you to verbalize it. Uh, long story short, um, the property came available. It is beautiful. There's a massive lake on it. Um, and we have a vision that that will be an incredibly spiritual place. So I know you wanted to add a few no, I was things just going to gonna say um, what was so special is how it wasn't available and we heard that there was land behind the land we had and we were so grateful for the land that God gave us but we were like it feels like it's not going to be big enough and then it became available and many people wanted that land. I mean it's on Lake Mary Boulevard. You know how land is here in Florida and God made a way that we got the land. Jesus image got the land. Yeah, we own so. it. The Lord, we own it completely. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, yeah, thank you, Lord.
And uh, just to let you know how normal of a family we are, my son just invited me to Jesus 22. He texted me. He, he just texted me the link. <laughs> wow, you guys are real soul winners. All right, that's great. <laughs> um, all that to say, uh, we now have the space uh, to see a dream come true. Um, I've dreamt for years, for over a decade, because my life was changed at very holy places where the Sisters of Mary were. I would walk that land and pray, and there were these stations to pray. And beautiful. I be how many of you know the Lord is the author of beauty? Yeah. And I want this place to be incredibly gorgeous. I already started working on the landscaping yesterday <laughs> and the ordering. I went in and just went to town. I could see it in my spirit. But this will be a place to, to, be, uh, to be with the Lord and to see his beauty, to be in stillness, to be in quiet, um, to spend countless hours there in the, in the presence of God. And uh, may the Lord do it and blow us away as he has continued to do so. Amen? Amen. Okay, let's give the Lord praise and just thank him. Thank you, baby. Come on. Lord, we love you. Come on. Come on, let's just stand up and give him praise. Come on. Everyone stand and just... Release a praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for all you'll do there. Thank you for all you'll do there. Glorify your name there, Lord. May millions meet you and know you and fall in love with you and burn brightly with bridal love. Amen. Amen. Okay, take your seats. You ready for the word of God? It's been a wonderful morning. When I was uh, pastoring in uh, Orange County, California, it's my training ground. Um, um, it was a real discouraging time. Nobody would come. Uh, I didn't even like my preaching. Uh, my wife wouldn't come. That's when you know you're struggling. She's like, no, your meetings are really dry. and I'd rather watch cooking shows. Um, I met with a pastor, and I'll never forget what he told me about another very famous pastor's church. He said, he said uh, do you want to know the secret to his growth in the church? I said, what is it? He said, he told me his secret. So I was like, it's certainly, it's got to be fasting or prayer or reading the scriptures and or extended worship, I, I didn't know, you know, or people really contending in prayer meetings. He goes, 70 minute services. He goes, that's his secret, he told me. And respectfully, I, I, I left the conversation, I said, Lord, may it never be said of me, or us, or anyone I love, that the secret to building your church was a 70 or 60 or 200 minute service. May time never glory regarding God's accomplishment. Amen? May we say one thing, Jesus built his church. Amen? So we've already seen so many wonderful things happen this morning and I'm expecting to see more. Say amen. Okay, we're gonna continue in the teaching that is called Friends of the Bridegroom. Friends of the Bridegroom. I don't have time to review this morning. Um, you'll be able to go back soon and watch, watch the uh, the teaching from last week. But let me just give you a very general overview. Salvation is a free gift, friendship is not. Friendship requires trust and friendship is costly. Salvation is free. But learning to walk with the Lord will cost you something, I promise you. It just will. And once you discover friendship in the Lord, you realize that all any price you pay it pales in comparison to the beauty of his touch. I remember going on a 40-day fast. I used to do maybe uh, two or three a year at one point until I couldn't think. <laughs> and I wasn't the, probably the most present husband because I couldn't even hear what Jess would say on day 30. She'd be like, can you grab that? Huh? Can you go do that? What? So I, it's just so weak in me, it became hard to travel, but it was glorious. And what I discovered that uh, 
typically come like day 35 or 40 or maybe like day 41 when I just come off the fast, the Lord would do something glorious, whether in prayer or in worship or the scriptures or I'd have a dream or something beautiful that changed my life. And to be honest, I remember most of those experiences with the Lord uh, 15 years later that would happen on those fasts. They were really marking. But one of the things I learned was that the moment you're in that experience with the Lord, you actually forget about your fast. And you forget about the hours in prayer. And I think what I would love to see change is that we stop looking at prayer as the price for something better. I, I value people who've taught that, I love them, but I just don't see that as lining up with the scriptures. When you have a healthy view of prayer, when you have a biblical view of prayer, what we've been telling this generation, especially in intercession movements, is prayer is the price to get something better. And the only way to think that way is to not see prayer biblically. Prayer biblically is communion with Jesus. The asking realm of prayer is a small piece of it that should take you oh, in an hour, eight minutes. Eight minutes of your hour, maybe. You wait on the Lord, you're in the scriptures, you're communing, you're worshiping until it becomes very real and you ask typically uh, uh, with, with, with clarity and focus and you know it's done because you're in the presence of God. Asking outside of the presence of God is not the place of faith. So when you're asking in the presence of God, Jesus is near, being that he is the spirit of faith, faith is available, and you ask and you know it's done. Uh, a great man said about 30 years ago, when I have 10 minutes to pray, I worship for nine. And uh, my father-in-law taught us that as well. If you have 10 minutes to pray, worship for nine. It's so true, it's so powerful. But prayer is not the price. Prayer is not even the price to be used of God. L let me help you. Many people are used of God who don't pray. In the Bible, I mean a mule was used of God. Yes or no? So as long as you make prayer the bridge, it's a, it's a statement that you don't know what prayer is. Prayer, true prayer, is oneness with Jesus. True prayer is the experience of God's presence. Madame Guyon said it's the tuning or the turning of the heart to the Lord. Prayer is, if you're, if you're writing, get ready to write, Prayer is, this isn't a teaching on prayer, but it does have to do with being a friend of the bridegroom. Prayer is a manifestation of your salvation. You say, no, 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 what, what do you mean? I got saved at the altar, my sins went away. That's like this much of the pie. It's a huge piece of the pie. Don't get me wrong, it's important. Because if there's no blood on the altar, there can be no oil. There can be no presence of the Spirit in the life of something that has not been washed by the blood. So the blotting out of sin is vital. It's vital, it's important. Thank God for it. Is anybody here happy that you will stand before the Lord wearing the Lord's righteousness and not the stain of your own crimson? Amen? Though our sin be as scarlet, we shall be white as snow. That is a wonderful, wonderful thing. However... There is more to our salvation than the mere removal of sin. There is the coming in, the indwelling of the Spirit who comes to live inside of you. And when you see that communion as an actual manifestation of what Jesus paid for, you'll never devalue it again and make it part of a journey to go fill a stadium. That was better than your reaction. What we've done is we say, I am going to seek the Lord so that he'll do this. And without knowing what we're declaring to ourselves, we, you know you can talk to yourself without knowing and create an internal culture without even knowing you're doing it and you create this value system. What we do is we actually tell ourselves that that stadium is more important than fellowship. 
because I am praying to fill that. Now, we should ask, we should seek, we should knock. But let's talk about that for a moment. Asking, <laughs> asking's the shallow end. Ask, seek, knock. Asking is the first stage. Asking is needed. Jesus said, you have not because you ask not, but asking is uh, kindergarten. And most of us don't even do that. And we wonder, why is my life jacked up? Ask yourself this question, have I asked the Lord? Why hasn't that happened? Have I asked? You say, of course, no, most of the time we don't ask because we're too stressed to ask. We're too in our head to ask. We spend all day rehashing things in our head. Two weeks later, the Lord goes, why don't you just ask? Is that not true? You worry about your rent for a month and forget to ask. Or what if it's a physical condition? What about just asking the Lord to heal you? Don't the scripture say, heal me? Lord, I cried unto thee, heal me and I shall be healed. Sometimes you just need to ask. But once you ask, and he replies with the answer, ask and you shall receive. Once you receive, you're stricken with wonder. You're blown away. Oh my gosh, there is a God in heaven. This is actually real. I am not some spiritual robot who wastes his time. This book is alive. Amen? Oh my gosh. And you, he actually answers. What does that do what, once he answers? What's it meant to do in the economy of God? It is meant to get you to seek. Why should you seek? Because he, this wonderful God who said yes to you is now pulling on your heart. He gave to you so that you'd seek. He answered the asking so that you take it a step further. Then you seek. That seeking is a more mature phase. And this is all in Matthew's gospel. That seeking is a more mature phase. And again, most Christians are not even faithful to ask. I ask the Lord all the time, I want to be your friend. I want to be your best friend. I want to be better friends with you than anybody in the world. You say, that's prideful. I'm not asking, I don't need him to tell people about it. And I'm not going to, did you know I'm the Lord's best friend? <laughs> Who would do that? You know, today, if you went up a mountain, not you, but if some went up a mountain and their face came down shining, we'd probably come down going, look at my face, it's shining. Moses didn't even know. Spiritual pride says, hey, check on my face, it's glowing. Doesn't it look nice? <laughs> I'm not talking about that. But when you ask, ask Ask for weighty things. You, when, when, you, when you fellowship with the Lord, yeah, you ask for big things and small things. I don't ask the Lord what I should wear. I know people do that. I'm not judging you. By the looks of some of you, keep asking. You have not received. <laughs> ask in faith. <laughs> You're asking amiss. You're tossed to and fro. Double-minded people are tossed to and fro. <laughs> Just joking. All right. Unless some ask for their parking spaces. I don't really care. Because if I get a bad parking space, it's just cardio and it's a great opportunity to work out. But whatever. But the deeper your friendship becomes, your, your conversation should become more childlike. And uh, you discover that the Lord cares about the sparrow. It's amazing. And the Lord knows when, uh, you know, regarding hair, you either have traitors or deserters. They either turn white or they leave. <laughs> but he knows about all that. And I, I, I personally want, I want to ask uh, for the, the simple things, but I also want to ask for the weighty stuff, the stuff of eternal uh, measure, the stuff that will matter in the age to come. I want proximity to the Lord. I want to be your best friend. Do in me whatever you need to do, whether it's painful or not to make me like you. Do not leave me to myself, Lord. Do not leave me to my own ways. 
Let Romans 8 be a reality in my life. Conform me into the image of Jesus at all costs, even if it's uncomfortable here. Pray that kind of stuff. Pray stuff like this. When people don't want you, let me be one that wants you. When people don't want to talk to you about things that are on your heart that grieve you, let me be, mold me into a man or woman who is trusted before the throne. Talk to me about what hurts you. So this seeking place is the seeking of the one who said yes when you asked. Okay. And this, this second realm, I hate to use realm because it sounds like a Jetson cartoon, but <laughs> this place, this seeking place in the spirit is, is, is forsaken. It's rarely visited by the church because it takes time. Time. There's no fast track. It takes time. It takes closing the door. It takes scheduling. Responsible scheduling. It takes saying no to great opportunity. It takes saying no to what most people would never say no to. In my context, it would be saying no to preach on some big platform to shut my door and be alone with the one who loved me and died for me. That's the seeking place. That takes time. Now, once you find him, once you find the one you've been seeking, his beauty is revealed to us. We discover that, as the Shulamite said, he is altogether lovely. And we've never met anyone else like him. When you find, once you've been seeking, and you find, you find the beautiful one, even if he comes with a suffering heart. When you find the wounded, pierced, bloody one, he's still beautiful. Is this a Sunday morning teaching? Or is this all right, too much? He's still beautiful. The tree is beautiful to the one who's been seeking. To the natural eye, it's horrific. But to the one who's been seeking, he's beautiful. Uh, a great woman once said, I want the Jesus of Calvary as much as I want the Jesus of the Transfiguration. I just want him. Amen? Now, once you find that one, now this is rare air where I'm going now. This is rare air. I don't know, but a handful of people who go for the third place, the knocking. The knocking. You get to the one that you found, you discover his beauty. And he has stricken you with, oh, don't get me wrong here, I don't mean the vision like you mean, this internal vision of who he is. And even the things you don't understand about him wound the heart. You discover his holiness in that he's entirely different than anyone you've ever known. And it's quite healthy to experience that he's entirely different than us in many ways, <laughs> in, gal in a galaxy amount of ways. Yet he's still a man. And this is where you step into the holiness of Jesus. And once you see the holiness of Jesus, remember what Matthew 5 says? Let's turn there. Are you enjoying this? I just don't want prayer to be looked at as this little bridge that takes me from, oh, where I'm at now to where my next little season is. And all of a sudden, it's just proof we don't know what prayer is. Prayer is the reward, it's not the price. If you're paying a price at all in prayer, it's to go into deeper prayer. I don't spend time with Jesus so that I can preach. I don't spend time with Jesus so Jesus 22 will grow.
We are to spend time with Jesus because we're in love. Where else shall we go? To whom shall we go, Lord? You alone. You have the words of life. Matthew 5 says this. Listen. Verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And this is that place that, that uh, it's the end of that uh, seeking place. It's like uh, the ninth inning in the seeking place where the heart is so purified by the Lord himself because the Lord lives inside of us. And the scripture says, is the heart of man not the candle of the Lord, not the lamp of the Lord. So the Lord lives inside of us and the heart becomes this flaming altar. And the brighter that flame burns, that is uh, fanned with attention and worship and adoration and reading the scriptures and fellowship with other people, all of these things are like you taking that little flame and throwing gasoline. Every time you worship the Lord, when you want to be stressed, you're putting gasoline on the fire. Every time you pay a price to get into the house of God, let me tell you something, there's no substituting the gathering of the saints. There is not. One of the great Uh, methods of deception one of the great roads of deception that I've seen even in people who've come in and out of Jesus image is this they find a place where they are all alone they cut themselves away from fellowship especially challenging fellowship they become their own pastor and they become their own Holy Spirit Without knowing, they become their own trinity. Nobody tells them what to do. They're not open to feedback, even if they tell you they want it. If you're going to tell someone, I'm open to feedback, you've got to take the feedback. I wouldn't know how to be pastored without letting somebody tell me what to do. I love it when people who love me enough warn me makes me feel loved. Is it always easy? No. But I leave going, thank you for protecting me, Father. Are you with me? So one of the ways that you throw gasoline on that fire is through the gathering of the saints. It's one thing to take communion alone. We should. I do it. But it's much more beautiful to receive it with the body. It is the supper that speaks of the body. It's the tearing of the bread into many that make the body one. There's something about taking it with brothers and sisters. Are you with me? And coming to the table demands forgiveness. Coming to the table demands reconciliation. Yes? So it's the coming together that is so powerful that accomplishes much more than we ever know. That is one way you put gasoline on that fire. Another way is praying the scriptures. You read through the scriptures slowly. Gasoline on that fire. Obeying the Lord when he tells you to preach the gospel to someone. Gasoline on that fire. Before you know it, that fire gets bigger and bigger and bigger right here in the heart. And what it does is it purifies the heart. And once the heart is purified, we begin to behold the Lord. That's verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. That is a future reality and a present reality. That you begin to behold the Lord. As the scriptures say, they looked unto him, the Lord, and their faces were shining. It does something. Amen? Now, once you see the Lord that way, and you find him, this is the rare air. This is uh, where a few go. They go, you're beautiful. And I'm thankful that you're revealing yourself to me this way, Jesus. I'm so grateful. But I'm going to take a risk here, Lord, even though I'm thankful that I found you. I asked and received. I seek and now I find. I'm thankful that I found you. But uh, something in my soul says, strike the ground with the arrow over and over again. I'm going to knock now. Now I want into the one who I found. I don't want to be a daughter of Jerusalem. I want to be a Shulamite. 
I don't want to be like the other kings. I want to be like David who says, keep me as the apple of your eye. I want to be like John when the other disciples were too afraid to even ask a question. Not only was John brave enough to ask the question, he was brave enough to put his head on the Lord's chest when the others were afraid to talk to him. That's knocking. You want to go in through encounter and experience to the one experientially who you found. That, friends, listen carefully, that is pricey. That will require your calendar, your money, your obedience, being misunderstood, that will require hours in the word to discover his heart that you might know his ways and not be like Israel who just saw his works because you can't go in without knowing how he does stuff, what he likes, what he doesn't like. And that's why I say, and now after you just heard that, prayer's not the price. Prayer's the treasure of life. David writes in the Psalms, I have given myself to prayer. Another way of reading that is, I have become prayer. What will you do? I guess, if you make prayer the bridge, what do you do once he's done using you in the land you've arrived on once you cross the bridge? What, what, what happens when God dismisses the crowds? Because that comes to everyone. What, what happens in that stage of life when you're all alone on the recliner? Gosh, I cannot believe I am 45 this month. Can you believe that, Kathleen? You can? <laughs> Rebuke. <laughs> 45. I met Jess when I was 25. I cannot, I, I'm, I am, I am over the hill. <laughs> I mean, my plan is to pastor you as long as I can. But the day will come where <laughs> it might be tough to get to this pulpit. And maybe Augusta National will call and say, please be an honorary member. <laughs> no, really. I mean, even Jesus dismissed the crowds. Jesus' earthly ministry did not end with massive meetings. It ended with a few at the foot of the cross. And I think it might be a healthy question. Why should it be any different for his followers? That's why this sexy celebrity preacher church thing is a bunch of garbage. It's I'm, fa I'm famous now because I'm giving you messages that you want to hear. But the moment I age out, I've got to do so much to my face just to feel relevant. Next thing you know, you're 50 and everything's getting stretched out. That's not the faith. It's not the faith handed down to us once and for all. What am I saying? You better believe seasons changed. And one of them is this, one day, it'll just be us and a few around us. What do you do now? If prayer's the price, what do you do when God's done using you in that way? I'll tell you what you do. You build a reservoir now. Get lost in his presence. Become a friend of the bridegroom. Now. I didn't even get to my sermon. <laughs> Become a friend of the bridegroom. Now. Build the storehouse. Now. Don't learn how to pray when you're 70 or 80. Learn now. Do you know why death is so hard for some? Because they're still holding on to the world. Affections. The church fathers called them passions the passions of the soul that all, all revolve around me. 
oh, the pride of life, the lust of it. It's the same old thing. It happened 6,000 years ago. The same old deal. It's, and you hold on, you hold on. What, where, where, where does pain really come from in that context? It's because something's being taken from us that we love. Where does fear come from? When something that you love is threatened. Right? Why, do you, why are you fearful over your children? Because you love them. We all will go through that. You love them. Why are some people afraid of losing their money? You ready? Because they love it. That's a sin. I said, that's a sin. May we be delivered from it. Do you know how happy you can be when every time God gives you money, you know it's not yours and you can just be like a little Holy Spirit sprinkler and just give it away. <laughs> give it away. Be, be, be generous. It's wonderful to live that way. But why are some such so, so slaves to their business? Because they're afraid of losing that thing. There's a difference between stewardship and slavery. No, no, no. You don't want to be had now by anything. Listen to me. Not by fame. One of the best things you could do is to get off social media after you register for Jesus 22. <laughs> get off social media for like a month. God, you'll be shocked at how happy you'll be. Because most of the people that you are offended by or think that God should be using you in a similar, they're all lying. They're showing two minutes of their day. They're not showing you their arguments with their spouse. And the ones who post the good meetings never post the bad meetings they had. <laughs> they only post the miracles. They don't post the 2,000 people they prayed for that didn't get healed. And then you compare yourself to that, you're like, I'm not called. Turn it off. Hear the voice of the bridegroom. Yes. Hear the voice of the bridegroom. Last week I went away for two days because life got busy, got painful, got cluttered. You can probably tell I'm a little bouncy and chippery today, huh? Like a little Keebler elf. <laughs> a little leprechaun. That's what my spirit feels. I'm all jacked up today. But that's what happens when you go be away with the Lord. I have a crazy life in the natural. My, uh, when I, if I were to look at it very methodically and systematically, I go, I'm, I'm doing all that? I'm leading all that? And then I would write myself a note. You are a psycho for even trying that. <laughs> what, what is wrong with you? <laughs> That's what my journal would say, in the flesh. What is wrong with you? You are crazy. Play more golf. <laughs> say it the Lord. <laughs> But that's what happens when your vision goes from there to here. And you've got all the noise. Like right now, it's 12.06. All of America says church ends at 12. That probably explains the problem. <laughs> is that the clock is, more, is louder in the hearts of pastors than the Holy Ghost. Now, I don't believe in keeping you long, especially if the meeting's dead, because long dead meetings are way worse than short dead meetings. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> this better, you better not think this is dead. Okay. But there are pastors who are slaves to the noise. That's not a pastor, that's an employee. Pastors don't work for the people. They serve the people and work for God. Are you hearing me? So last week I told Jesse, baby, I'm out. Can you handle this? Of course it's got to work. She felt strong enough to handle it. I went for two days. The moment, the moment I walked into this little room. And I got out of town. Because Jesus got out of town. And the moment I walked in that room, usually it takes me a day. A day to wait. Because I need that fire just to burn Michael up so that Michael can sense his presence. That didn't happen this time. I walked into that little room and it was like the Lord was going, I've been waiting on this one for months. I sat down on this little sofa and opened my Bible and it was like heaven on earth. And I feel like I got born again again. And I'm happy. 
And you know, people are still stupid. <laughs> it's that old saying, stupidity is contagious, it's a transferable anointing. <laughs> people are still dumb, people are still blind, people still don't get it around me, but I don't need them to get it for me to get it. Yeah. And God will liberate you and set you free. Are you with me? You can't have that. You cannot have that if the ministry assignment is the reason you pray. Because one day the assignments will lift. I'll never forget going to visit Oral Roberts multiple times. What would he do just sitting on that chair? On a leather chair. He's just sitting, looking out at the golf course. And I thought, wait a minute. This is the man who told the world God was good. This is the man who built a university. I think he raised $500 million in the 60s. This is the man who prayed for the sick on TV. This is the man who made these tent revivals a thing and prayed for the sick. Now he's on a chair looking out the window. Not just for a month, that was for a few years. Thank God he knew the Lord he served. Thank God he knew how to open the scriptures and read the precious holy word of God. Thank God he started doing that young. Because this pathway takes a while. You will not learn it in a day. Start now while you can. Be a friend of the bridegroom now. Now. Figure it out now. Are you with me? Let me give you one scripture from my sermon so that I can feel better about myself. <laughs> oh, not that one. That one begins with brood of vipers. <laughs> I'm too happy for that one today. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we, won't, we won't do Matthew 12. Okay. Jesus said, listen carefully. Let me give you another translation there. I am a little picky with translations, and no, I won't answer your question about which one I'm talking about. Students at Jesus School love to ask me that one. Which ones do you not like? I'm not doing that one. Okay. Matthew 7, I'll just read New King James from my Bible. Matthew 7, verse 1. I'm going to give you a secret on how to be so consumed with the bridegroom and how to, to, according to the scriptures, resist temptation and thwart that process. You don't want to thwart the process. Judge not that you not be judged. For with what judgment you judge you will be judged. Oh my. Let me tell you what that looks like. You're running a business. Uh, or let's say somebody else is running a business and you don't. You've never had the pressure of running a business. You, you work at that business. And you criticize everything they do when they run their business. But you never had the guts to go up to the person and actually just talk it through. What you're signing up for in that moment is somebody who's serving you criticizing you behind your back and never taking the time to understand you. And with the same measure you judged your boss, you will be judged with. If it's wrong judgment, let's say you get it wrong, which we do. We get it wrong about people. Guess what? People are gonna get it wrong about you. And when you discover they got it wrong about you, it's gonna break your heart. Just like it broke your boss's heart. That's what this kind of looks like. With the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Verse 3, and why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own. Jesus going, dude, you can't take a speck out of his when there's a log in your own. You can't see well enough. And by the way, Jesus is like, there's a log sticking out of your face. 
Verse five, hypocrite. Well, the Lord is so kind. The Old Testament revealed our need for him and his holiness, fire and brimstone. But this New Testament Jesus would never rebuke. Hypocrite. First remove the plank from your own eye and then you'll see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not give what is holy to the dogs nor cast your pearls before swine lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you in pieces. If you want to be caught up in the friendship of the bridegroom, stop criticizing others. Let me read this to you. I touched on it last week and then I'll close in prayer we'll receive communion. Criticism, or I should say criticizing that which I have, write this down, criticizing that which I have no God-given authority in. So let me help you in this context. You might be sitting in this seat going, I have the authority to rebuke the team at Jesus' image and tell the team how to run the church. No. How do you know you don't? Because you're not on the team. So it's just, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just trying to help you like how to clearly know if you have authority in that realm or not. Now you can think stuff and we're accountable so never serve a church that's not accountable. If you don't see fathers and mothers behind us which there are about nine to ten who will rebuke the pants off us. Some of them seem to enjoy it. Uh, that's what Joy Dawson was to us. She loved it. Thank God I miss her. She's probably doing it from heaven. I just can't hear it. You don't want to sit under a church that is not covered and held accountable. Authority depends on submitting to authority. So I want to make that clear. But what destroys churches is when we go, hey, that person at that prayer line, I should be there. That's my job. And they didn't pray for that person the right way. Dion doesn't pray for people the right way. He should use his left hand instead of his right. And his posture is really bad when he does it. And no, don't like it. Don't like it at all. That's called criticizing what's not yours. Criticizing that which you have no God-given authority in is a sin that is hated by God. This destroys churches and births division. And it shrouds itself in tears, shyness, and what seems to look spiritual. Next week I will teach on four biblical passages that address that. Okay? So I just wanted to give you one thing to resist this week, judgment, that will suck you up and out of the delight of the soul. Jesse will tell you, when I got back from my little trip, I'm too caught up to care. And it's awesome. And you can be happy. I said, you can be happy. Smile at me. Be like a robot. Go. You can all be happy in Jesus. It's legal. Amen. Let's take the communion elements. Dion, would you come up? Now the table gives us the, 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 the setting to let the stuff go. Let's just let it go. I'm going to have you do um, the body. Come close, buddy. Do you love Dion? I love him. All right, now listen, here, here's my challenge to you pastorally today. Jesus sees the pain, but he's also the healer of the pain. And Jesus sees right and wrong, and he keeps perfect books. My challenge to you pastorally is for while we sit in our seats about to receive the table of the Lord to forgive. Can we do that today? And you'll leave free. You will leave free. Go ahead, Dion. So if everyone wants to take the bread, and just put all your focus on Jesus. Put your heart, your mind, your eyes, your thoughts, Praise everything you, on Jesus. So, Lord, Lord, we take this bread, which is your body, Hallelujah. and we just thank you, Jesus, that you gave your body to be broken so that our bodies could be healed. Lord, you said, or it says in your word, that the plowers made their furrows long, yeah. and every stripe was so Praise. that we could be healed. 
And so, Lord, we remember your finished work. We remember Hallelujah. your body that was broken. And we break this bread. Thank you, Lord. As your body was broken. And Lord, we thank you, God, that you left nothing undone, that there was no sickness too great, thank you, Jesus. that your sacrifice does not cover, that does not heal. And so, Lord, I pray that as we partake of this bread of your body, that every sickness, every disease, every weakness, yes, every infirmity, Receive every bit of church. feebleness would leave Receive every single person's God. body yes, right now in the name of Jesus. And so we give you all the glory, all the Jesus, glory, and we receive in Jesus' receive name. Receive today and receive Amen. your healing in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. All of you in need of a healing in your body, trust the Lord. Ask him, just ask. Say, Lord, heal me. Heal me. Heal me. Lift that cup. Oh, there's power, power in the body and blood of Jesus. Imagine, church, that the scripture says, as often as we receive, we declare the Lord's death until he comes. What a powerful declaration this is. By death, he has conquered death. And so, Lord, in Jesus' name, we lift the cup of the new covenant that is the better covenant. And it's the cup of the covenant in your blood. It is shed for the remission of sin. All those around the world watching, let the power of the blood of Jesus Christ fill every home, every person, everyone in their seats. Be filled in Jesus' name with the life-giving power of the Spirit that comes only, only, only by the blood of Jesus. The power of the blood be upon you. I plead it upon you in Jesus' name. Thank you for the shedding of your precious blood. Thank you for your suffering. In Jesus' name, let's receive. Oh, hallelujah. Just lift your hands there and just take 10 seconds and worship. We bless you, Jesus. We worship you and adore you and honor you. And honor you. I'd like our prayer team to come forward, please. Before anybody leaves, would you all stand? Prayer team, come forward. You can stay here, Dion, with me. Would you just lift your hands and receive a blessing? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, bless your people. Let the power of the loving presence of the Spirit flood us and keep us. Thank you that your joy is our strength and fill your people with your strength today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, be blessed. Amen. If you have sickness in your body, we want to invite you forward. Would you come first? We would like to pray for you. Can I have a few presence group pastors? Join them as well. We might need a few more people, I'm guessing. If there's any sickness in your body, you came for a healing. We want to honor that. Come receive prayer. And then if you need prayer for any other reason, we just ask you to let those who are sick come first. It would be our honor for our team to pray for you. God bless you. See you tonight. We love you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Our heart is to see presence-driven, Jesus-filled churches emerge and be sustained and thrive and flood the nations and the cities of the world. This will do so much for the church and for the world, but also it'll save families who are in the ministry. We want to stop the grind of church and invite the presence of the Lord. When you talk about Jesus with an awareness of Jesus, what you talk about is an invitation. He told me when I first started, he said, Michael, if you'll talk about me, I'll turn and look your way. And when I turn and look your way, I'll come near. And when I come near, I do things. This isn't a sermon. It's an invitation to Jesus. He hears every word. Every word. Oh, I wish more churches were built that way. Hey everyone, Michael and Jess here. We are standing on the exact location where the headquarters for Jesus Image will be. The local church, Jesus School, uh, House of Bethany, all of that will be located right here. In fact, in the exact spot where Jesse and I are standing will be the 
beautiful pond in front of the sanctuary where we will most likely be holding baptism services occasionally. So we're so excited. We're right here in Seminole County off of Lake Mary Boulevard. We own this land. God owns this land, I should say. And the building will be right behind us. The sanctuary, the admin building, and the prayer house. And so listen, we just want to say thank you so much. Thank you for standing with us. Thank you for giving. Thank you for praying. Thank you for being so patient and believing with us. We're believing God that the nations will descend on this property, that they will worship Jesus, that the sick will be healed here, that the lost will be saved, that the presence and glory of God will rest here. We want that. We believe this is holy ground and that the tangible glory of Jesus will be right here on this land. And so we want to invite you to come and invite you to be a part of what God is going to do here. Yeah, we are just so very thankful for you. Thank you so much for your prayers and your love and support. We are truly blown away with what the Lord is doing and we cannot wait to have you here with us one day. Yeah, and we're really excited about what we're going to show you right now. We want to take you on a journey and show you the incredible design, detail, and vision of what will take place on this property. Our Jesus Image Home will be located in the beautiful Seminole County right off of Lake Mary Boulevard. This is a thriving area filled with families, restaurants, and the beautiful amenities that this area provides. The vision of this property is simple. We want the presence of Jesus Christ to be known. We have a deep value for experiencing the Lord in His beauty and the majesty of His creation. This facility will host our local church family, Jesus School, which is our discipleship training program yearly conferences, the Bethany House of Prayer, and it will also be an outreach hub for the state and nation. There is vision behind everything. The location of the buildings, the landscaping, the water features, and of course the architectural design of the buildings themselves all speak to the beauty of the Lord. We want all who enter the property to feel as though they've entered into the peace of the presence of God. With all the stress and turmoil that people face on a daily basis, this will be a place of serenity, worship, reflection, and adoration. Rather than this feeling like a headquarters, we want this to be the house of God and a home for His people. You will notice that the structures themselves have a timeless look and design. From the stonework to the stained glass, it will feel like the house of God. The gospel will be declared from every side of the property in multiple different ways. As you pull into the new Jesus Image home, you will discover a massive parking area that will be framed by and filled with beautiful shrubbery and trees. There will be plenty of room for you and your family. A beautiful drive leads you to the sanctuary building. You will enter through a stone archway. Upon the archway, one of the foundational verses for Jesus' image will be inscribed. This verse carries the heartbeat of our lives and the construction of this house. Only one thing is needed, Luke 10, 42. Upon entering the front door to the main building, you will see a massive gathering area. It is a two-story structure. The first level will be filled with life. This will be a place to congregate with friends and family, to get your children checked into children's church, to eat, or simply enjoy a coffee around a beautiful fireplace. The first level will also house the youth room. We have a major focus on seeing this next generation love Jesus. The youth room will seat approximately 500 people. This room will also serve as the second year facility for Jesus School. Our children's rooms will be located on the first level. This will be a convenient experience for children and parents upon their arrival. Our children will receive amazing Bible teaching, a worship experience, and knowledge of the presence of the Holy Spirit for themselves. The second level of the main building will facilitate working spaces for our board of directors, our staff, and interns. This will be a great blessing for us as we move forward in wisdom as a ministry. As you know, God has graced Jesus' image with a massive reach through media. 
Thousands have come to Jesus, and so many have been healed and set free through our media ministry. We will have our very own production studio where we can create content and continue to stream live to the nations. We will release podcasts, social media content, videos, and much more. Multiplied millions have watched our media content, and we believe our creative team will flourish in this new space as they step out into this vital and anointed calling. As you walk across the main gathering space, you will discover the sanctuary. What an amazing space this will be. While we will have state-of-the-art technology in the sanctuary, the space will take you back in time, a time when churches had a sacred feel to them. You will discover beautiful stained glass behind the platform. Stained glass will line the sides of the sanctuary as well, all telling the gospel story of Jesus. There will be timeless wood beaming and stonework throughout. We long for his presence to fill this place, and it will be a home for you as well. We will seat approximately 1,500 people, yet it will not lose the personal feel that we so deeply value. The platform will be spacious with plenty of room for ministry, our worship teams, and of course, a baptismal. You will notice a round stained glass image on the back wall of the sanctuary depicting a dove in fire descending in the room. May the Holy Spirit fill our hearts each time we gather as a church family. The sanctuary space will also serve Jesus School. This will house our hundreds of first-year students as well as our general school sessions. These students will be missionaries to the nations of the world and to their generation. The gospel will be declared from this sanctuary space multiple times per week, and people will be raised up from this place to share Jesus with the world. And may millions be saved, healed, and touched by the Holy Spirit. Lastly, for our favorite space in the property, the Bethany House of Prayer. This will be the prayer house for Jesus' image. It will be a place for adoration, silent prayer, reflecting upon the scriptures, and worship. You will notice that the house will be built upon a pond. The setting will be quaint and breathtaking. Stone and wood mark the space with warmth and a traditional look that we believe will transcend generations. We believe this will be the hub of the entire property, a place where intimacy with God and pure prayer ascend before Him. It is named the Bethany House because Bethany was the place where Jesus was loved deeply. Therefore, He rested there. Mary found the better part, and it is our prayer that all who enter will find Jesus there and fall in love with Him. May Jesus be pleased with all that takes place here. May he be adored and worshiped on this property. May his word be taught with clarity, boldness, and love. May his gospel flood the nations, and may the generations to come find him here. Will you stand with us? Will you pray and give toward this vision? Will you give sacrificially for the sake of Jesus and his gospel? Will you be a part of something that will outlive you for the sake of eternity? Thank you. We love you. Jesus is beautiful.